Hello, my name is Kara Warburton, and in today's tutorial I will show you how to create a terminology database, or TermBase. I will use a web-based terminology management system from Interverbum Technologies called TermWeb. Now I assume that you have some knowledge of terminology management already. But if you don't, ne no mind, you can still benefit from this presentation. I will give you some references for further research and uh, you can always also contact me at my email address showing on the screen right now if you have any questions. So let's move forward. So as I said, we will be using TermWeb and before I go into the TermWeb system itself, I want to cover some basic principles that you should be aware of before you can create a terminology database. Now the first relates to something called the data model. The data model is the structure of your database. A database is structured according to the structure of an individual terminological entry. Each terminological entry corresponds to a concept. So there's one concept covered by the entry. Within the concept entry, there are sections for each language. And within each language section, there are sections for, e for each term. You can have more than one term per language in the entry, of course, because of the fact that we have such things as synonyms. So that's the structure of an entry. Um, you kind of need to know this because when you create your database, you have to assign fields to levels of the entry. Now here's a, an example of some data that might appear at these different entries. At the concept level, the very top, we have something like the subject field. This is a concept about a laptop computer, so maybe the subject field could be computer hardware versus computer software, for example. A broader concept at the concept level, that would be a relation to other entries. In this case, the broader concept is computer and maybe a definition. At the language level, for English, we have three terms. Each term has its own section, and you can put fields in these term sections. So for example, for the laptop computer, we have here a status value deprecated versus portable computer has a status value of preferred. And ThinkPad, ThinkPad is noted as a trademark. So this way you can distinguish between the terms in the entry. So that's how information gets associated to different entries sorry, different levels of the entry. Okay, next we have to talk about data categories. Data categories are the information. It corresponds to the information that goes into your database. Uh, for example, terms, subject fields, parts of speech, usage notes, definitions. Those are just a few of the principal types of data categories. Each data category should have its own field in your database. Okay. Now after you've decided which data categories you need, which data fields you need in your database, you have to also think about the type of field for each data category. In TermWeb we have these types, the red ones are the most use, um, common ones. Text, so for example for a definition, uh, you can have a text field. Now within text field types you have the choice of just a short field for a single line of text or multiple lines of text, which would be the larger field. You can also have a pick list, which is a single value choice. So you have a list of uh, permissible values in the field and you have to choose one, but only one. Then you can have another type of pick list called multi-value, where you can, again, have a list of predefined values from which you have to select, but you're allowed to select more than one. So those are the types of fields. We have also those other ones, but not used that often for, for me anyways. Um, once you've... Um, Okay, back to pick list fields. I wanted to just cover some examples of data categories that are useful for pick list fields. Uh, part of speech, I mentioned that already. Noun, verb, adjective, that's conducive to a, a pick list field. Term type, acronym, abbreviation, full form, and so on. But then for the multi-value fields, you could have something like customer or project or department where a particular entry in the database is, is relevant to or is used by um, different um, stakeholders, if you want to call it that. So you could have multiple, you could need multiple values uh, uh, available for these types of pick lists. Okay, so this is the last slide and it shows you some of the information I think you will need at these websites to learn more about creating a database, about data categories, and about the data model. So I'm just going to pause briefly and then we will go right into the software. Okay, so this is the logon screen for TermWeb. I'm going to just click login and uh, uh, 
by default here it goes to the last screen so I just get back to the normal screen. The search screen here is what it looks like. I have uh, a number of different terminology databases here that I've been playing around with um, but we don't need to look at any of these. We want to create a brand new one. So for that I'll click on admin and this is where you create a new database. In TermWeb a database is called a dictionary. So click on this link and then here's the list of databases I already have. Now you can export here. Export is ex in this in this screen exporting means exporting the database design not the database content just so you know that. If you want to save a copy of your database design you simply click export and it creates an XML file that you can use uh, to create a new one based on the same model. Okay so let's click new dictionary to get started and you give your database a name I'll just call it Kara Test. Um, you can add a description here, I won't bother. And then here is where you select the name of a person from the available list, and these, these users have been predefined on the server. Uh, somebody who will take care of the database, so uh, an email where uh, a message can be sent if there's a problem. So I'll click my own email here, that's my personal email. Um, then you start by selecting your languages and there's a drop-down list here. First, all languages, which is a huge list. Uh, to minimize or to limit the amount of scrolling required, you could pick from one of these smaller lists. So let's say we're going to just use European languages today. So this is a lot less scrolling. I'll pick English and I will add... Okay, and here is um, a few more default settings. You don't really need to change anything here, but I should just point out that um, this system allows you to create geographical variants of a language. For example, I could have American English versus uh, British English. You can also create orthographical variants within a language. For example, there's different spelling um, systems for German, so you might need that for German. Uh, but we won't bother with that for now. Click Save for English, and then I'll get another language or two. Um, okay, so I'm picking my second language now. Let's try French and we will just try one more. Um, add maybe German. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we have three languages, and click Save here. Okay, now I can show you at the bottom of the screen that we have to create our fields now. This is our data categories, and you can see why I talked about levels before. There's the concept level and there's the term level. So the concept level is concept information. So we'll click Add here to add a field. And what you see in this list are fields that have been created for your convenience from the TBX standard. So for example, if you want a definition at, the, um, at this level, you just click there and, you know, and then click Save. You can see that it's already defined as a multi-line text field so that you have enough room to write a long definition. Click Save and then we'll try another concept level field, perhaps... Um, uh, well, let's cry a custom. You can pick any one of these, but um, let me show you right now how to create a custom field. Let's say you wanted a multi-value pick list field for customers, okay? Because maybe you manage different customer the terminology for different customers in your in your database. So you click the uh, radio button for custom field. Just type the name of the field that you want, and here you have to select select your type. So this would be a multi-valued field because you have more than one customer to manage in your system. Um, okay, and here is the window refreshed and now we have a place where we can define the values for this multi-value field. So you click add to create a value and the bottom field becomes empty. So you can type in here customer1, whatever you want to call it, click save. And then you can add another one, customer2, click save. And add maybe one more whatever. Click Save. And so those are your, you would of course probably have more than three values, but um, they're already in the list now. And once they're in the list, you can you can change the order that they appear by using these up and down arrows. Okay, if you want customer two to be first, you could change it like that. 
and once you're done with this window you just click save at the bottom. So now we have two fields at the concept level, definition and customer. So let's start now at the term level, creating fields for the terms. So I would recommend first of all that you, you know, again th these are the default values that are available for you from the TBX standard. You don't need to use all of these of course, but there are a few that are very important. Part of speech for example, pick that, I would recommend that. And here we see the values from TBX. If, if you want to add a different value, if you need something else, you can click add. You can change this list even though it comes from the TBX standard. You can add values, um, maybe uh, preposition, although prepositions are rarely, rarely stored in um, in terminology databases, but just for an example. And you can also change the the names of these val TBX values. If you want to, you can just click edit, select the one you want to change and um, something, you know, well, that's not very nice, but other, uh, okay, other. And you can change the, the, the way the field looks in the system, even though you're not changing your compliance with TBX. You're just changing the superficial or the surface value of these fields. Now I might want to point out this checkbox here. If you want a field to be mandatory, in other words you can't really save an entry without filling in this field, you use this checkbox. Value is required. This makes it mandatory. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to use this for most fields, but for part of speech, I, I do like the part of speech to be mandatory in my databases. Okay, click Save when you're done. Now we have one term level field. Let's add term type. This is another very important field, so I'll give, I'll include that in this tutorial. And it's a TPX field, so you really don't have to do anything here except select it. Those are good values. You can add or change them if you want. Click Save. And maybe one more. I would suggest the context sentence. That's another very common field in terminology databases, but. A lot of the other fields, gender, for example, are important for, for French and German, so you'd probably uh, want to include that. Okay, and I should have mentioned that, I'll go back to context, you can change the length of the field as you can see here. It's already predefined, but you can change that if you want. Okay, so now we have a basic database. We can add more fields, we can add more languages, and when you're done, just click Create Dictionary and it should create it. Okay, so uh, the dictionary was just created and you can now see it listed here in my list of, of dictionaries or databases and you can see there are no entries in it as of yet. Um, you can see the size of your databases in this window which is kind of convenient. You know, um, I have one for example from Hewlett-Packard 14,000 some odd entries. Okay, so that's that. So once you're finished here, you go back to the search view and you can start using your database right away. I will change the, I will select it from the drop down list to show you that it's there. And there are not going to be any entries in it. You can see no terms found because we haven't added any yet. And with that, this tutorial will be finished because I will create a separate tutorial for adding uh, and modifying and working with entries. But it's, it's basically pretty simple. You just click on New and all the fields you defined are going to be there. And you just use them and click Save and you, you have an entry. So please join me on the next tutorial uh, and thank you for, uh, for attending. Uh, have a very nice day.